this used to be a topic I really loved to talk about. Especially because I was an Aspie kid in middle school. What I'm talking about is the anime Naruto. And the manga, actually. Now, I haven't followed the anime since 2008. I've kept little tabs here and there, yet it might as well be Bleach. Y'all niggas already know I don't care about Bleach at all. I think, I think it had a hiatus at one point. I don't know if it's back again, but I don't care. I don't care. And part of it was just that the manga was ahead, and I only really wanted to know what was happening ahead. I don't care about moving pictures. Moving pictures mean nothing to me, as much as plot advancement and what happens next. And it's worked since I've been following the season and the series all these years now and it's amazing how we've been stuck in sort of the same day the same I want to call it the story arc because uh, this war has two story arcs within it so that's that's kind of interesting actually and one thing I've noticed about the series is that Naruto, despite being the fucking dumbass, despite being the unwise hero with a lot of things to learn, he's always the one that's giving the moral to the story. Isn't that kind of funny? Like, uh, I really started to like the series after the Chunin exam arcs. Of course, in the Zabuza arc, he was teaching that kids morals to to be brave, to stop crying all the time, you know, to stand up for yourself. And I think he tried to give some morals to Haku, but I'm not really sure. And Chunin exam arcs had some things of their own, but. Other than that, for the most part, that Naruto was a moral teller. He was telling that D that it's not all fate. It, a lot of it is what you make of it. Uh, with Gaara, it's that uh, there's more to life than hurting others and this brutalistic sort of mentality that Gara had where his purpose was just to kill. He was a destroyer and that's all he was there for. Because that's the only thing people saw in him. And he, he did this for a lot of characters. But now, for the past five years, all Naruto has been about is the end of all conflict. And it's really interesting. Naruto's supposed to be like the third guy, third or fourth guy who he's taking this path that he wants to end conflict for good. That's basically the purpose of being a ninja. Or that that's that's the way for him to stop conflict for good. And this is part of his feud with pain and the other guys and it's also part of his feud with What's his face? Um, well, it, it's with this Obito guy. And Madara, in a way. But Madara is too real at the moment. But it's really fucking amazing that he's still sp the lighthearted guy that's spreading the morals, spreading the things like that. And he's essentially the comic relief main protagonist. He. In the beginning, you weren't supposed to take his ass seriously. You, you sort of got his ass kicked all the time, in a way. But now he, he's like one of the top guys, essentially. <sighs> Which 
which I do find interesting. Now, everyone likes a good underdog, so I can get behind that. And currently, like, characters have been dying and dropping like flots. I mean, and, and it's characters that I really like too, like, uh, Neji. That nigga is dead as fuck. Uh, Shikamaru. That nigga gone. That, that, that nigga gone. Like, uh, he is not coming back from that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> they drained the fucking life out of my son Shikamaru. He, he was he was left a skeleton practically. They were they were brutal on that guy. But one of the most interesting characters in the series. No, he he's gone. <laughs> my my son's dead. Neji's dead, man. Neji is awesome, man. and that nigga's gone. He's dead. He's dead as shit. <laughs> and you know some more niggas are gonna start dying, cause it, it's Naruto, like... You can't have a story arc where five people don't die. Of course, they, right now it's all over in Union, cause, uh, the dead have come back. A lot of the uh, guys we've grown to love, they're, they're back now. And guys that we didn't even get in chance to know that way they're back so that's cool shit this whole end of all conflicts thing uh the main protagonist and the antagonist have like the same sort of goal we had uh the antagonist essentially it's basically instrumentality from neon genesis evangelion and you already know what I had to say about that fantasy world homogeneity shit. Um, we're all essentially orange semen. That actually, I think my parents over, my mama overheard that shit, and uh, she thought I was saying some of the most hateful shit in the fucking world. And uh, yeah, I had like a talk after that. So y'all, y'all already know niggas is stupid, but uh. With this one, it's basically everyone's gonna be trapped in an eternal idealistic genjutsu world where uh, death, uh, violence, and all this horrible, conflicting shit doesn't exist. It's essentially John Lennon's wet dream. And you already know I don't like that. All you need is love bullshit. That would have never passed. 100 years ago or 200 years ago, it definitely wouldn't have passed in, well, not in Renaissance, but even before that. Renaissance, you could interpret it that way for a dumbass, but in medieval times before, no, that shit wouldn't fly. Because that's not shit that flies. And Naruto was basically saying, uh, we don't we don't want that fantasy world. He, he wants to achieve his dream. He wants to achieve his goals. He, he, he wants things in the reality. And if conflict should end, it should end in reality and things like that. And for a show that has a lot of death, a lot of violence in it, he did sort of solve that pain issue non-confrontationally. He, he didn't he didn't try and kick anyone's ass for that situation. And he ended up walking out the hero, so that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Granted, it does take a very, very warped sense of reality and human nature for you to expect that the way he, Naruto handled that talk of pain, that would have changed his worldview completely, which it did. <laughs> and Pain ended up sacrificing his life to bring everybody back. So that, that just goes to show how stupid the plot can get sometimes. I mean, who's buying this shit? And of course, there's like the love triangle between Naruto, uh, Sasuke, and Sakura, where. Now they're both gonna 
run for Hokage. I don't know how Sasuke is going to fare up considering the fact that he basically abandoned everyone. Nobody likes his emo ass anymore. His hairstyle is still wavy as shit though, so maybe he can win with the style department. I don't think jumpsuits are ever going to get in no matter how badass Naruto gets. Under those parameters, <laughs> Naruto may win, or Sasuke, I don't know or care. Point is, they're eventually going to start beefing in the future, since there could only be one. As for Naruto finally getting to fight with his dad, not against, but with, alongside him, that that's some pretty cool stuff. It makes the plot go full circle. It, 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 there's a lot of resolve going on right now. But I don't get, uh... It's a very weird anime thing. Did you notice, like, this whole ending conflict shit? It, it's there with Naruto. It's there with, uh, a lot of shows, actually. Code Gaius. The Final Fantasy franchise, granted that is a JRPG. It's all about ending that conflict shit for good. This epic war to end all wars shit. That, that's totally anime. It, it doesn't get more anime than that. Although Japan could be good getting onto something that us Westerners aren't getting. Because I guess Westerners have this, at best, realistic outlook on violence and at worst they have a uh, this eternal war eternal struggle thing this Trotskyism but come on guys that's that shit is starting to get way too preachy uh, the show itself has always been pre too preachy I don't hear a lot of critiques about that most critiques about Naruto are that He's not a real ninja, and that there's too much filler, not enough fighting, too much flashbacks, too much woe is me, uh, 12 year old had a shitty life when he was 6, kind of stuff, uh, which I can get behind, I can understand that, but damn, it, it, it ain't that big of a deal compared to the preachiness of the whole thing. It, it goes on Gundam Wing parameters or that kind of stuff. Neon Genesis Evangelion, there was an infusion of philosophy and psychology in the midst of it all. But that was always an edgy show. It was always trying to be creative about shit. Anyway. This is Mr. Wonka 7, and thank you. Thank you for sucking my dick. <laughs>